Hi. In this video, I'd like to show you a hex editor called Cinelize It. Uh, it's something that I haven't seen on YouTube at all. I searched for it. Uh, there don't seem to be any videos on it. I'd like to show you what the program does, um, but more usefully, I'd like to show you how it can be applied to a synthesizer and to a synthesizer patch, and how it can let you open uh, a sysx dump file and be able to easily read off the values that are stored in that particular patch and what they're used for. For example, how much is the bend wheel set to affect uh, the pitch of a particular oscillator, in this case, oscillator 1. Uh, but let's step back just for a sec, and first I'll show you where to get it. If you go to this website, synalysis.net, and then click on Downloads, then you can download the program. Again, it's free. Um, once you've got it downloaded and opened up, um, you won't see all of this, I'll tell you. Um, this file right here, you're seeing the left half, and that's what you would normally see if you just opened up the file in this program. Let me just close this for a second. I can show you what it looks like. So this is how it would normally look when you opened up the file. It's just hexadecimal and ASCII characters, and this Cinelize It program doesn't actually know anything about this file or its structure. So there's no magic going on here in terms of the program itself. But then you have separate files called grammar files. And this is something that I've made uh, myself for this particular type of file. And what it lets you do is it lets you go through and say, okay, this, uh, you know, this byte right here, this is actually unison detune. I mean, and I've chosen to type all this extra information in here about the fact that you can find the unison setting in the oscillator menu 2 and polyphony mode in oscillator menu 1, all that stuff that I've just added in there to make this more useful for myself or for whoever happens to use it in the future. Hopefully I'll get around to finishing this one of these days. Um, but yeah, um, for example, here's unison detune. So you can easily read off that the unison detune value is 25, even though, of course, the hex value is 19. That'd be very difficult to read off. And normally, of course, it'd be very difficult to know what any of these numbers mean. Um, so that's basically what makes this particular hex editor useful. Um, in that you're able to define specific bytes or, or groups of bytes, here you can see both of these are highlighted, um, as being used for a particular purpose. So if we go down, say here's the oscillator 1 pitch and pulse width settings. All right. Um, again, when I select this on the left side, you can see this whole group has been selected. And then within that group, now it's going to step through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bytes. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bytes that are within that particular group um, that happens to apply to oscillator 1 settings. Um, so for example here, here's how much the modulation envelope is going to affect the pitch modulation depth. And in this case I've also put that this particular knob is in the oscillator section and that it's called mod envelope depth. If you look over on the right side, um, you'll see two sets of numbers for a lot of these. Um, the reason for that is that in synthesizers, and in this particular synthesizer, a lot of times there is what's called a zero centered value, which means that the value actually goes from negative, I believe, 63 to positive 64, or something like that, negative 64 to positive 63, I don't remember which it is. But uh, either way, the second value is the actual real value that is stored in the byte. But the first value is what I have set up, which I'll show you how to do in a few minutes, to um, interpret this value. So here I've put, if it's a 66, I've said, okay, interpret that as being plus 2, because that's how the synthesizer displays it on the screen. So to me, this is the most meaningful way to represent it. So basically, for most of these, you can just ignore the right value and pay attention to the left value. That'll be the one that uh, is most meaningful for you. So I mean, I could go through more specifics of what this particular patch does, but the specifics of this, I mean, grammar file, the specifics of this grammar file really aren't as important. What I will do, though, is I'll show you how um, some of these are set up. So let's take a simple one, for example. And by simple, I mean not a, if you watch the MediQuest videos, you'll, you would have heard the term packed parameter, where more than one value is being stored within a single byte. 
Uh, let's look at one that's not a packed parameter first, and then we'll look at the packed parameter one. So here's a normal one. Um, you actually have to make the changes in the grammar file itself. So again, here's the grammar file. I'm looking at the unison detune setting. Okay. Um, and so this is just, it's just set as it is. Uh, when you first created it, just it's the default settings, and it's very simple to make. So I could just add a random one in here, some byte. I would just right click on the byte I wanted to, to uh, label, put insert. In this case, it's just a single byte, so I'm just going to say number. I'm going to give it a name, test byte. Okay, and then over here you'll see that test byte has been added, and that uh, right now it's just an eight. It's just eight bits that I want to define. If I wanted to make it sixteen bits, you'll notice it changes changes to uh, two bytes wide, etc. Okay. So, but anyway, by default, as you can see, that's you can just leave it like that, and that'll read out the value. In this case, it's sixty-six. Uh, that'll read out the value directly for you. Uh, by the way, if you want this value here to display in a different way. You can have it display in hexadecimal, or you can have it display in octal if that's useful for you for some reason. Um, in my case, most of these values have been decimal. Okay, so that's how you set up a single byte um, and add it to a grammar file. Now, if you want to add something that's, say, one of these packed parameters, that's just slightly more interesting. So let's check it out and see what it looks like up here. By default, it's the same, and the way that you originally define it is the same, uh, but you probably want to label it with whatever parameters are actually stored inside of it, just for your own reference. So here we have unison, polyphony mode, and filter slope. Those are the three values that are stored in here. Um, and if I open up my uh, KS4 manual, you may recognize this from uh, some of the other videos, then if I go down to my sysx messages section, I can see that uh, unison, which is right here, unison voice type filter type says C pack parameter 2. So back up we go to the pack parameter section. Here's pack parameter 2. All right, so within this particular byte, it shows me that bits 0 to 2, that's the rightmost three bits, are being used for the number of voices, where 0 is off, all the way up to 8, uh, where 7 means 8 voices. Bits 3 and 4 are being used to define the polyphony mode, so 4 options for those. Mono, mono, auto glide, poly, and poly with the same note voice stealing. And then finally the 5th bit, which is the 6th bit over, uh, defines a filter type, so it's just a 0 or 1 value. So the way those get interpreted in here, or the way those get defined in here, is through the use of masks. So I'm going to press edit, but normally you'd press plus to add a new one. Press edit. So you name the mask. This right here is the name that just appears in this list only. That's the only place you'll see this particular name. Um, now here's where you set your mask. So over here back in the manual it said that the rightmost three bits are used for the um, unison mode. So in this case, our mask is going to be 111. This program actually adds in the extra zero on the left side just to make it a complete byte. But uh, all we need is 111. And then down below, this is where we get to set how each of the values stored in this particular section of this byte get represented here in the interface. So the reason this says unison off is because I've got unison off here using the plus button. You can add or subtract these, uh, to remove them I mean. I've got unison off being the value of zero. So because in the rightmost three bytes of this particular, pardon me, because because in the rightmost three bits of this particular byte it's uh, zero, 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 this value is zero and therefore unison off is showing. Okay, so if this were say one, 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 in terms of the actual value, then uh, that would mean it was 7, which means that unison 8 voices would show up right here. All right, let's look at uh, another one of them. Let's just go back, sorry, just one sec to this one. So you notice that these are just, these are easy, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
that the direct value is because they're on the rightmost side of the um, of the binary number, okay? But the next ones, we're pulling them from, as we saw over here, bits three and four, for example, right? So because of that, the value, you have to imagine that, first of all, they're all zeros, all right? And we're, we want to only use these two bits out of this byte because it says bits three and four right here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so we're going to set these as 1s for the mask. But then down here, when we're saying what values we want to equal, what sort of text to display in the interface, we have to keep in mind the fact that it's taking the entire number that's coming in as a whole unit, and it masks it with this mask. Therefore, if neither of these happen to be on, say these are both zeros in the, in the value that it's reading from the hex file, that means that, of course, the value of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is 0. But let's imagine that this particular bit was a 1. Well, 1, 0, 0, 0, or you could say 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, actually has the value of 8. So 8 is what you have to put in this box in order to detect on this side what's um, in order to have it represent what you want it to represent. I think you kind of get the picture, but once again, if it were 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, it would be 16. And then if it were 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, it would be 24. Okay, so just be careful with those. Another thing to be careful about here. Notice how I entered 33 and changed to a 51. When you, it's kind of strange. When you input the value, it it takes it in as, hexade as hexadecimal, but then it converts it to decimal. So what I mean by that is if you wanted to put back in uh, 24, you'd actually have to put in this value in hexadecimal into this box, and then it would change to a 24 automatically for you. So in that case, 0001 is just 1, 1000, zero, 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 zero. okay? So that's something to watch out for, because at first I was thinking, why doesn't it come out with the right values? It's because it kept changing the values on me like that. Okay, and the last one's filter slope, but I think you can kind of understand how it works, 0 or 32, based on how this how this mask is set up. All right, um, I think the only other couple things I wanted to mention, just for completeness sake, are the fact that the order of these matters completely. You can't rearrange them at your own convenience. The order that these are in is actually what determines which byte they're being applied to. So if I were to switch around the unison and the unison detune, which right now are these two, unison, unison, detune. If I were to switch them around in this list right here, watch what happens. Now the unison detune, it's saying that the unison detune is being stored in this particular byte, which it's not, and that the unison, um, the, all these other settings are being stored in this byte, which it's not. So just be careful for that. Um, and the other thing is that these groups, you can add new groups, and when you do, at first they're going to appear in some random place. Where you want them to be in the hierarchy is somewhere just underneath this sysx file. So you don't want it to go all the way outside of it like that. You want it to be under it like that. And then you want to place it in the same spot as the item that you're wanting to put into it. So for example here, so we wanted to put this LFO1, LFO2 mono into, into a group. I can't leave it like this. I've got to actually drop it into the group. Okay. And then now this is going to kind of hold whatever we happen to put inside of it. Test group. All right, and as you can see, everything gets applied live to the file as you're working with it. So it makes it really easy to kind of go through and test things and uh, make changes as necessary. Okay, uh, I think that's all for this video. That's probably more information than I needed to include. But uh, hopefully you have a chance to play around with this program and find it useful in some way. Thanks for watching.